Up to now, we focused on linear number patterns. Now we're going to have a look at a few other patterns. A linear number pattern is a pattern that has a constant difference between consecutive terms. The general formula will then be Tn is equal to Bn plus C. Next, we're going to have a look at patterns that have a constant ratio between consecutive terms. In the given pattern, you can see that you add 4, then you add 12, and then you add 36, which means there's no constant difference. This time, however, there is a constant ratio, because 2 times 3 will give me 6, and if I multiply 6 by 3, I'll get 18, and 18 times 3 is 54. So a constant ratio is when term 2 divided by term 1, which in our case is 3, is the same as term 3 divided by term 2, or then of course any term divided by the term just in front of it. In example 1, we still have this same sequence where we've already determined that we multiply by 3 every time, which means the constant ratio is 3. In A, we are asked to give the next two terms in the row. So I'm going to take 54 and times by 3 to get 162. And when I multiply that by 3, I will get 486. Question B. Determine the general formula for the sequence. This specific type of sequence is done in depth in grade 12. For now, we're going to use inspection to get the general formula. The general formula still starts off with Tn, which indicates the value of each term. And now I'm going to start at 2, my first term, and determine what happens from one term to the next. To form term 2, I will then multiply by 3 once. To get term 3, I'm going to multiply by 3 a second time. And for term 4, I'm going to multiply by 3 a third time. Can you see that for term 2, we multiply by 3 once? For term 3, we multiply by 3 twice. And for term 4, we multiply by 3 three times. So every time, one less than the position of the term. For our general formula, we can say we start at 2 and then multiply by 3 every time, but not n times, but 1 less than the position of the term. So our general formula is 2 times 3 to the power of n minus 1. Question C. Calculate the value of the 8th term. So now we can use our general formula to get term 8 by saying 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 8 minus 1. Or you could have immediately said, I start with term 1 and multiply it by 3 7 times because I multiply 1 less than the position of the term. This gives a value of 4,374. Example 2. Consider the sequence and determine the general rule. Here you can see that once again we have a constant ratio because we multiply by 2 every time. So again, to write my general rule, I'm going to start off with my first term of 5 and multiply that by 2 a certain number of times. But once again, I will multiply by 2 one less time than the position of the term because for my first term, I haven't multiplied by 2 yet. Example 3. Consider the sequence and give the next three terms in the sequence. In the given sequence, there is no constant difference or constant ratio between consecutive terms. Then your next option is to see whether you can find a relationship between the position and the value of each term. If you focus on the position of each term, you will realize that the value of the term is given by the position squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared gives us 4, 3 squared is 9, 
and so it continues. Therefore, to get term 5, we will say 5 squared. For term 6, it's 6 times 6. And for term 7, we have 7 squared. Question B. Give the general rule for the sequence. We've already recognized that to get the value of any term, we simply take its position and we square that. If you understand this pattern, we can now give you a whole lot of different variations on this. If, for example, we have a look at the sequence 4, 7, 12, 19, we once again don't have a constant difference or a constant ratio. If you, however, focus on the difference between terms, you will realize that the difference increases with 2 every time. And that is an indication that it is some form of our general rule n squared. So now let's see if we can find in which way the original row of 1, 4, 9, 16 was adjusted to get our new row. Here you will see that every single term is simply the original 1 plus 3. This means that here the general rule is once again our n squared, but then we still need to add 3. So similar to this, we can do many different variations and ask you to use inspection to get the general rule. In grade 11, we'll have a look at this type of sequence in more depth. Another example where you need to find the relationship between the position and the value is the sequence 1, 8, 27 where you need to recognize that these values are simply the position to the power of 3. Therefore, the general rule will be n to the power of 3. So to summarize, firstly, a pattern can have a constant difference, and then the general rule will be in the form tn is bn plus c. Or there can be a constant difference. Then the general rule is in the form a, or our first term, multiplied by the constant ratio to the power of n minus 1. And then there are many different patterns that have a relationship between the position and the value.